It's a big bucks race to replace George Santos, one that has national implications about party control of Congress. The point starts right now. Democrat Tom Suozzi wants his old congressional seat back, but now he's bucking a red wave on Long Island. He's here. His Republican opponent, Mozzie Pillip, has declined numerous invitations to be on this show. But before we talk about her, let's talk about your district. I was in the district this past week, and I can tell you that the number one issue on everybody's mind is immigration. immigration. So, what are you going to do about it? Well, listen, I wrote an op-ed piece with Peter King years ago. A Republican. A Republican to find a bipartisan compromise on this issue. I've said my whole career, quite frankly, the only way to solve problems is to work across party lines and find common ground. I'm a problem solver. I was the vice chairman of a group called the Problem Solvers. 25 Democrats, 25 Republicans met every week to try and find common ground. So Peter King and I wrote an op-ed piece that the New York Times called The Grand Compromise. But what are the common sense solutions that you're proposing for border control? Well, we have to secure the border. We have to treat people like human beings, and we have to have to pay for it. I mean, right now, there's a bipartisan deal being negotiated in the United States Senate between uh, a guy named Chris Murphy, a Democrat from Connecticut, and a guy named uh, James Langford, a uh, Republican from Oklahoma. They've got a deal. The president says, I'll give, I'll make compromises. Why? Because he wants to solve the problem politically, he wants to solve it governmentally, and he wants to get a deal on Ukraine and Israel. And President Trump is coming out and saying, don't make a deal because I don't want to give Biden a win uh, politically. And Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, is saying the same thing. That's, a, as Mitt Romney said, that's appalling. You're saying this is a, such a problem, such a problem, such a problem. Now you don't want to wait a year to see if Trump gets elected? So your opponent is running as it tries to link you with the immigration policies right now of the Biden administration. Is that fair? It's not fair because I'm one of the people who's been pushing for years for a bipartisan compromise on immigration. In fact, uh, in August of this year, when I wasn't even saying, speaking to the press, I wasn't running for office yet, I spoke one time to the New York Times. I said, Joe Biden should do what Bill Clinton did. Take the issue that they're attacking you on, make it your own, propose a bipartisan comprehensive solution. If the Republicans go along with it, great, we move the country forward for the first time in 35 years. If they don't go along with it, you say, listen, you're just weaponizing this issue for political purposes, that's wrong. But now we have a situation where the word immigration is really poisonous in the New York area because 170,000 plus people have arrived here and have put an amazing burden on not only on New York City, but on New York State. So what things do you think the president could be doing that would ameliorate the problems that we are facing here in New York? You know, executive orders, which have been done by previous presidents, we haven't had a solution on immigration since the 1980s when Ronald Reagan was the president. There was a bipartisan deal. There has to be a bipartisan compromise that closes the border, treats people like human beings, and is paid for. But and what does closing the border mean? Does it mean you build a wall and nobody comes in? Or do you, you let people come in one by one by one, depending on their immigration status? Well, I'm not going to go into all the details of my deal with, uh, with Peter King, which uh, did all those different things. But I proposed, after going down to the border three times, and we have these like dozen facilities that are all dilapidated, they can only process 40 people a day, that we should build an Ellis Island on the southern border. Everybody's got to go through the front door. While you're there, you get your health checked, you get your background checked, and a judge adjudicates whether or not you're eligible to come in or not. What has happened for the past 30 years is 20% of the people are eligible, 80% get deported, deported. The problem is it doesn't happen for two or three or four years, and by then, the whole thing's chaos. So, so you're saying you would actually support a situation where you create this Ellis Island, and if and 80 percent of the people will get sent back from where they came from yeah that's what happens now it just happens three or four years later and it's a chaotic system we need order i mean every problem we face in our country is complicated you cannot solve complicated problems in an environment of fear and anger with everybody just yelling at each other or just doing their talk points like my opponent does just you know republican talk points i've always tried to propose concrete solutions as to how to solve the problems and it has to be bipartisan to make it stick so what should the president be doing to help New York City and New York State deal with this influx of people who need services, help, work, jobs? 
something. The president and the Congress, you know, it's not just a southern border crisis, it's a Washington D.C. crisis where they don't get anything done. And everybody's sick and tired of everybody just fighting with each other. We need money for the states and the cities like ours in New York that are being burdened with this problem that has been created by Washington, D.C. By Washington, D.C.'s... I have to get back to this thing, please, Marsha, okay? The bottom line is there's a deal right now on the table that's being negotiated in the Senate. The president is willing to make a lot of concessions, like ways they've never yeah, said before. But the before. House isn't going along with this. So what's that's the point? The, then you have to hold the House accountable. That's how politics is supposed to work. If you get elected, that's what you're going to have to do. And I'm happy to do that because that's what that's how that's the only way government can work. But so you're telling me that your opponent, Mazzy Pillip, supports not you know not coming up with a compromise. Right. I'm bipartisan. She's just doing Republican talk points. And these talk points by the Republicans and the Democrats don't get us anywhere. We have to find compromise to solve the problems and fix. People are sick of all these problems. They want us to f solve the problems. I'm a problem solver. She's a problem contributor. So we have a situation where um, there's been a lot of problems with migrants attacking New York City Police Department um, officers. Kick them out. You, you, you favor deportation? Mm, immediately. I mean, I forget, I, I can't, I'm so emotionally upset by it that I don't even care about the nuances of the law and things like that. If you have people that are invited to your house that go in and break the furniture, you're going to let them stay at your house anymore? They got to be kicked out right away. When they, the idea that they gave the finger to the reporters when they were getting let out, like it was oh, this guy, get rid of these guys. They got to be knocked out. I mean, my opponent in this race is trying to portray me as some sort of, you know, crazy lefty. Okay, I'm a Democrat. I'll always be a Democrat. Are you a lefty? No. <laughs> you, you tell me. You've known me for 20 years. Do you think I'm a lefty? I mean, I'm a problem solver. I'm a get things done person. I ran for governor of New York State, got beaten pretty badly, but I ran on an issue of crime, supporting law enforcement, reducing crime, of reducing taxes, of going after corruption. I am a person that listens to people. And I try and address the concerns that the people have. I'm not beholden to my party. And I will go against my party on the left, and I'll go against their party on the right, and I'll go against anybody who doesn't want to actually solve problems and help people. So let's talk about Israel. Right now, I know it's a big issue in your district, but now, just the last couple of days, President Biden has decided to uh, issue sanctions on several Israeli settlers because of their anti-Palestinian violence. How do you feel about that, and how will it affect people in our area that appears that the president is cracking down on Israeli citizens? Well, I went to Israel in December. I came back on Christmas Eve. I visited with parents whose son is a hostage. They're from Plainview. Their son was from Plainview. He was in the Solomon Schechter School that I helped to support the Solomon Schechter School when I was the mayor of Glen Cove and the county executive of Nassau County. Uh, I went down to Kafar Aza in the Gaza envelope. I saw the gruesome horrible attacks and we have to first start by recognizing that Hamas is not some sort of loose confederation of desert uh, soldiers they are a sophisticated disciplined terror army that wants to destroy Israel and kill Jews and they've said very clearly that if they get the chance they're gonna do it again and they'll do it again after that so whatever we do we have to stop Gaza I mean, stop Hamas and the president in Israel is actually very popular because he's the only president that actually went to Israel during wartime. And he sent the aircraft carriers there, and he's been given a very strong speech. And he's getting beaten up politically here in the United States of America for being so strong pro-Israel. But Anthony Blinken, who's the Secretary of State, has now been talking lately about the creation of a Palestinian state, that you need to do that for peace. Your position on that? My position is that... I would love to have a two-state solution someday. It would be a great dream come true. It was ex actually explained to me the first time I went to Israel in 2002 when I met with Shimon Perez, and he explained to me his vision for a two-state solution. Now, this is 22 years ago. We, that should be the dream, is that there is a real government for the Palestinians that picks up the garbage and does the sewer and does the water and educates their kids without all this hateful rhetoric that they get in schools now. But everybody's terrified of that idea. And I'd be terrified, too, if somebody said to me, oh, you know, we're going to make peace with Osama bin Laden. He just wants to live in Staten Island. Don't worry, you can trust him. I wouldn't like that either. So right now, that can't happen. But the president and others are trying to negotiate a deal 
that says, let's get the Saudi Saudis, let's get other Arab Sunni states that don't like Iran to work together for a post-war world that actually addresses this. Well, we're going to have to leave it right there for now, but our conversation continues right after the show on our streaming channel, CBS News New York.